Okay, we're going to talk about moisture measurements. If you're interested in that, don't be shy, hang around. It's going to be the shortest presentation of your life and mine. All right, guys, so a few slides. Here's the problem. Growing in the field and in a greenhouse with substrate materials, such as the rock wool, which you see here, is an entirely different business. And the main reason is that the electrical conductivity, the EC in soil, typically it is smaller than 0.5 decimal per meter. Take your tap water, measure the EC of the water, hardly will be larger than 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So when it's inside the soil, the soil itself will be, will have even less value of conductivity. On the other hand, in a substrate materials, because it contains more water, much more water than soil, and this water typically is a lot more salty. The nutrient concentration is much higher. Then in this material, you expect values of conductivity easily 10 or 20 times higher than in soil. So here is the predicament. All the instruments you may be familiar with were designed for these kind of cultures. These instruments are not new. They've been around for 50 years. And they were designed to work in soil. And they did a good job. They served agriculture well. More recently, when we try to use this instrument in greenhouse cultures, the limitations of these technologies became apparent. And so we develop a new instrument. We call it the Teros One. And this is what I'm going to talk about. Here is a, ooh, a horrible figure. Something is missing here. It's supposed to be some material. This is the only technical slide you will see. It shows that some material between a pair of electrodes is represented as a capacitance and a resistance in parallel. The capacitance accounts for how much water is in this supposedly porous material. And the resistance or conductance there accounts for how salty, how conductive the material is. Now, the most traditional technique using moisture sensors is known as capacitance measurements. These instruments aim at measuring that quantity, the capacitance of our sample. But that is very difficult to do uh, for reasons which I will not discuss. But if you're curious, I wrote this paper here. It explains that problem in some detail. Uh, the fact is, it is very challenging. And I don't know of any instrument who can successfully measure the conductance, uh, excuse me, the capacitance when the material is conducted. And so the answer to that is that we measure the whole thing. We don't measure just the capacitance. We measure capacitance and conductance at once. And because these, the impedance of this circuit happens to be a complex quantity, a complex number, we call this technology complex dielectric measurements. And in doing so, of course, we get to measure the dielectric, so the water content, and the conductivity at once with the same instrument. So let me show you the test results of the Terrace One in standard materials. Uh, there are very few reference materials when it comes to the electric measurements. Water, air, of course, and then we have some solvents, ethanol, methanol, DMSO. I do want to say something got lost in, in shifting images. The data look better than this. <laughs> There's not this color. But anyway, we're very excited about the performance of these. And, uh, and you see here the permittivity measurements. The conductivity measurements are on the right. As you can see, our measurements are very good, up to 20 decimal per meter. 20 decimal per meter, guys, is a half of the conductivity of the ocean. And, and that, that is uh, quite remarkable. I don't know of any instruments who can do a good job up to those salinity levels. So those are tests in solvent or, or, or water. And now we also have a test in substrates, such as the rock wool. Uh, those tests are 
complicated and time consuming. Major problem is that when you do those tests, typically you want to know what the, what the content around the, your sensor is, the local water content. But from in a laboratory, all we can measure uh, by weighing is the total amount of water, the average water content. And so we developed, here is a, a simple image of a much bigger setup, which is called the hanging water column. And with this setup, we can control moisture and salinity of the water. And we do that for different values of salinities and for different materials. I'm going to show you some results we had in uh, with Rockwell. Maybe there we go. We're gonna we tested three sensors. I'm going to show here only two: the Teros one, the the TerraLink from GrowLink. And so, as you can see, forgive me, guys. That's the slide. Okay. So here you see the relation between dielectric and water content. And the different curves, the different colors, correspond to different salinities of the water. So the long story short is this, the dielectric of water does not depend on its solid concentration. You measure the dielectric of pure water, and the number is 78 at room temperature. You put salt in it, it remains a 78, it doesn't change. It changes only a little bit. And it is expected from the experiment that we did that these curves all merge in one curve. The salinity should have no impact on your dielectric measurements, hence the estimates of water content. But if you use a capacitance sensors like as the Teros, uh, the TerraLink, then you will see that the conductivity of water does impact the measurements. And that results into an uncertainty in your estimations of water content. For the same reason, when it comes to measuring pore water AC, the relationship again between, we have these two quantities called the EC ratio and the dielectric ratio. Again, more explanations are in the paper if you're curious. These two quantities should be related to each other and the salinity should have no impact on that. All the curves should merge into one curve if we do a good job. That's what happens with the Teros one. Again, with the Teros link, there is this apparent dependence on the salinity that result into an uncertainty of your final estimate support water is As simple as that. So the final conclusions are, ta -da, Teros one is the only sensor we know that, that does a good job in conducting material. That's all I have for you today, guys. Thank you for your attention, for your time. Woo.